vitaminbeliever.com forward slash love him with your life six dot pdf some of y'all need to revisit the truth behind hip hop amen. amen that series we talked about all of this stuff y'all didn't quit listening to devils trying to tell y'all that this stuff is okay amen, amen. love him with your life six amen it's important. This is important. I'm going to stay on this. We might be up to 20 before this is over. But we need to learn how to give the world up for God. Amen. I just never seen a people that don't want to give nothing up for the one that gave them everything. Who gave it to you? Somebody's still trying to figure out how they can hold on to sugar. Uh, what about sweet and low? Is sweet in the name? Then don't eat it. Just eat low. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I know I'm going to be getting emails and texts. And, what about gum? <laughs> Just one now, later? <laughs> later. <laughs> Just cut the now off the package. Later, 30 days later. And you never needed that. Do, don't your teeth feel like they're coming out when you chew a now later? I feel like they're just going to take my teeth. I'm, I'm chewing taffy and teeth. What is in that? And why is it all those different colors? Why is it so hard and who made it square? The edges are sharp and will cut your mouth if you, if you put it in wrong. That's, that's some dangerous candy. Then it turn your mouth whatever color it is. I remember when I was going to school, you used to own the school if you came with that big... Remember, they used to make this long now later package. It wouldn't even fit in your book bag. Be sticking out. Everybody, ooh. Y'all rich. Y'all rich. Because you got big candy. Y'all rich. They don't know. They don't know, boy. You, you rule the school. <laughs> Love him with your life six. Amen. I'm going to stop talking about sugar since you can't have it. Well, you can have it. Now, don't go. Don't, don't, don't make them have to call the paramedics tonight because your sugar is 850 because you trying to get it all in before Wednesday. <laughs> don't do that. Laying in the bed with crumbs all around you, and you passed out. Don't do that. <laughs> Please <laughs> don't do that. Hey, Amen. The best thing to do is start today. Look at somebody. Oh, I don't receive that. I'm sorry, Pastor. I usually roll with you, I rock with you on most things, but that last thing that you just said. Because I don't think I'm going to do that, Elder. I think I'm going to have to at least savor something before this thing jump off. Hey, man, I'm not a big sweet. After I went on that year, sweets, I could just do without it. And I ain't never drink sweet drinks, ever. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. No, yeah, no, she, I, I don't. I don't. She could fill the refrigerator up with it, and I, I just won't drink it. I just, I just stopped. I, 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 don't, I got rid of the urge or the whatever it was after a year. I, I could do without sweets. But, you know, some of y'all can't. So it's going to take much prayer and fasting and consecration. That's why we consecrating and praying. Amen. Amen. You can do this. Look at somebody and say, you can do this. You can do this. Hold each other accountable. Video yourself, videotape yourself putting your purse together. Do women put their purse together? The purse, like how you get all the stuff in there and do it just accumulate over time? I, I, never, I never knew that. Like, I just see my wife, she just grab one. I didn't know if it's like you wake up in the morning with a list. Okay, Carmex, keys. <laughs> Any men ever wonder that? I, I, it's the contents of a purse.
Hold each other accountable with the sugar, though. Check on each other. Yeah. You can do this. Amen. First couple of days, it's going to be it's going to be rough, but you'll get past it. Amen. The devil's end time army that he's assembling right now will be those that are not willing to give up their lives for God. Our church is filled with people that claim God, but don't want to give up their life for God. That's essentially what Mr. West has done. He claimed Christ. But he didn't want to give up what he got from the devil. I just preached the whole, I, I, hey, yeah, he didn't want to give it up. Why would you keep it? If you worship the devil, promoted the devil, and put the devil in millions of people, why would you still want that if you gave your life to the Lord? That's the biggest question. Because he never gave it up. Amen. Kept the same company. Kept the same stuff. Never changed anything. You just said you was different. Right. No, I would think there would be so much sorrow and remorse for all the millions of kids that you have led astray. I wouldn't take that stage again. The guilt and the shame of that would make me forfeit all the profits of it. I wouldn't keep trying to figure out how I can keep getting paid off of it. Folks don't know you because you know Christ. They know you because you knew the devil. Oh, but he can change. Yeah, but you can't keep doing it. Where is the change? Matthew 16 and 25, for whosoever will save his life shall what? Lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall what? So many people are going to miss God. They're going to miss Christ when he comes back because they can't lose their life. What they want to do is so important to them that they'll forsake what Christ wants. Keep their life. Keep their plans. This is what I want to do. I have people tell me all the time, yeah, but it was prophesied on me when I was little. And they told me this. That, but what did God say? You know how many false prophets will prophesy on you just to get paid? There are those that hold their titles, positions, prestige, and accomplishments in higher regard than God's will for them. Let me say that again. They hold their titles and positions, prestige and accomplishments in a higher regard than God's will for them. Proverbs 16 and 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the what? Ways of death. Do you know your titles, positions, prestige and accomplishments don't matter? We talked about that last week. Look at somebody and say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who the world thinks you are and says you are. The world telling you you're great. That doesn't matter. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and what? Lose his soul. People that want the praise of men to feel prestigious and successful are easy prey for the enemy to tempt with his mark. Yeah, these are the folks that will take the devil's mark. The people that need the praise of men. People that need accolades. People that need to look good in front of others. These are the people that the devil can count on to go the distance because they're going to do whatever it takes to get in there. So somebody can say, good job. I'd rather hear the Savior say, well done. My good and faithful servant. I need faithful on my title. What I'm doing in this life, I'm doing what God, I believe I'm doing what God tells me to do. But it's not even as important as where I'm going after this life. 
So I got to make sure I see a smiling Savior. But people want the praise of men now so they can feel prestigious and successful like they've done something. And that makes an easy prey to take the mark. Revelation said, he causes all, speaking of the Antichrist, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. He causeth all. Causeth all. And people are going to freely take it and freely denounce, willingly denounce God for it. Why are they taking it? To fit in. To be in the end crowd. To be amongst the others. Yeah, this shot is just practice. But he calls it all. Y'all, look at somebody say, this is the last hour. Man, listen. <laughs> if you let the devil trick you and make you run out and do the fool in this hour, you in trouble. If you can't see what's going on in 2021... To know that 2021 may be the last year. And you doing the fool? On the clock? Man, we don't have time for that. Amen. I don't have time for that. But he's going to cause all small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive the mark. He's going to cause them to do it. And folks are going to willingly desire to do it. Yeah. Can I keep going? Yeah. Are y'all listening to this? Yeah. Amen. The devil himself was kicked out of heaven because he desired the praise that belonged to God alone. We know that, right? Kicked out of heaven. Isaiah 14 and 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which dis weaken the nations? He's still a nation weakener right now, weakening the nations. But he was cast out because he wanted the praise that belonged to God. He was not satisfied with leading the heavenly host, which he had a job leading. I mean, I'd be good with being over God's choir. Amen. That's a sugar-free choir for sure. I'd be glad. Ooh, can you imagine what they sounded like, though? Ooh, the heavenly host choir? I mean, as soon as they stand up to sing, you start crying. <laughs> Every song. Then they probably don't sing with voices. It's probably telepathic. You just feeling it. <laughs> they just <laughs> That is stupid. That is stupid. That's stupid. Man, God's choir, boy. So you would think he would be satisfied with that. Oh, he wanted more. Isaiah 14, 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So the devil had big dreams. Didn't he? Forgot who was in charge. He even had the angels in Genesis 6 to come down and produce God-like beings to get the worship of God's most precious creation. So kick me out of heaven. Couldn't get the heavenly host to worship me there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make your most prized creation worship me. That's what he said. I'll take the worship of the humans you created. Because that's your most precious creation. Yeah, I can just hear the devil see, since I'm not, obviously. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I can hear God say, no, you're not. <laughs> so since I'm not your most precious creation, we'll go get the worship of the humans. So we'll bring the angels down to 
mate with the women and create beings so that the people will worship these beings. Bring superpowers into our world or our, our, our atmosphere through these beings. And this is where all of these ideas of comic book characters, superheroes, all this stuff, meta-human, the whole meta-human idea, all of this is from Genesis 6 when the sons of God came down. The Bible says in 6 and 2 that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that, that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. So this is a spiritual entity being created by angels and people. Amen? Amen. This is not the sons of Seth doctrine that makes no sense. Go get the video part 12 of the truth behind hip hop where I talked about that and totally blasted the sons of Seth doctrine. People that teach the sons of Seth doctrine are scared of demons. That's all it is. Because they don't want to believe that demons are, you know, able to do these kinds of things. Or, or that angels are able to come down. How can an angel come down? They don't have a human body. The Bible specifically tells us, be careful when you're entertaining certain strangers because you don't know. It could be an angel unaware. The Bible tells us they came and appeared and talked to Abraham. Whole lot of accounts of it. But the sons of God, they saw that the daughters were fair. They came down and began to mate with them and created giants. The Bible calls them giants or Nephilim upon the earth to get the worship of humans. Can I keep going? Amen. Our society has created organizations to pay homage to these old ones or ancient gods and goddesses. The Bible refers to them as men of old, men of renown, famous beings that people worshipped. And our society created organizations to pay homage to them. The founding fathers of this country when they built the rotunda at, at Capitol Hill, they put all of these gods and goddesses up there that they worship, that we, our country, is uh, indebted to, supposedly, for the inception of America. America's getting evil now. No, America's been evil. Amen. There, now, there's been some Christian things happen, but overall, the rotunda shows you that, hey, this thing been demonic since its inception. Because they were all Freemasons that founded this country. And so they created all these secret organizations to worship Satan in secret. That wasn't anything new because the Jews in the Bible were doing that. The Pharisees, they would worship in secret. They would worship the devil. Publicly, they would promote the Bible. Y'all know the devil knows the Bible. I'm not impressed by anybody that knows the Bible cover to cover. I've had arguments with folks. Well, folks try to argue. I don't argue with demons. But I've had folks try to argue the Bible with me and brother, see this ain't and this ain't and this ain't and this ain't and this ain't. I was like, see, brother, we supposed to be talking about the Bible and you manifest it. I mean, they just, I go, you just have to hang up the phone. I had one of them called me one time, a movie star from Hollywood, and he called the office. So I called him back, you know, and I'm like, dude, like you, you know, I know you're a movie star and stuff, but bro, you, you wrong. Oh no, but see, the Bible says, and then the Bible says, and then the Bible says, I said, brother, I'm gonna hang up in just a second. Oh no, 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 see, you just like the rest of the preachers. You don't want to hear the gospel. You don't. I said, brother, can't nobody that done put on a dress for Hollywood tell me about the Bible. I'm the preacher of the gospel, bro. You want a dress? I didn't put it on. I'm the preacher of the gospel. And I mean, quoting scriptures, spitting them out, just, I mean, back and back. I, I click, I hang up on it. But he knew the word. He knew the word. He knew the scriptures. Because the devil knew. When Jesus was on the mountain, the devil was quoting scriptures to Christ. So just because you know the Bible backward and forward and you consider yourself a scribe, it don't mean you have the Holy Ghost power of God, bro. I know plenty of scribes that are Freemasons. But our society has created organizations to pay homage to these old ones and ancient gods and goddesses. 1 Corinthians 10 and 21. This is what Paul was talking about. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. 
You can't be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. But you can't sit with devils to progress and then give God the credit. You can't use the industry to make yourself famous and then give God the credit. Eventually, you're going to have to sit with a devil and make a deal. Oh, if I could let you in on the conversations of some of these folks I've talked to that are in this industry deep and I know a lot of people. A lot of people you don't know that I know. And they all got the same conversation. But you mean I might have to give up this or give up that, man? But, dude, I mean, I always felt like I was going to have it. And I always, man, I, need, I said, bruh, that's the choice you got to make. You got to give it up if you want God. Because the devil gave it to you. Brother, what if I just write you a check and bless your ministry or whatever? Do that. But that's not going to change your status. <laughs> now, I take that check now. That's your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. <laughs> I'm joking. I have never told nobody, told anyone to do that. I tell them, keep your money, bro. Keep your money. Yeah, just keep your money. Keep your money. They don't want to keep it. Huh? I don't want to keep it. Yeah. You, you sure? I just mail it. I slide it under the door. I just, they try, brother, you're not going to buy your way out of this. You're going to have to make a decision to denounce what you did, what you are into. Now, God forgives. Trust me. But you got to denounce it. And a, denounce, a denouncement of it is turning from it, walking away from it, and not profiting off of it anymore. You're going to profit off the... How the devil paying your bills and you serve God? That don't even make any sense. Preach, pastor. I sum all the truth behind here pops up in what message? That's what I'm doing right there. <laughs> in order to be something in this life, and prove you have value in the eyes of the world, you must, look at somebody say, you must. You must pledge to these gods and goddesses. They're the gods and goddesses of affectation. The pretender spirit. To look good in front of others. To impress. To show people what you can do. God in heaven is not the god of that. Quite the opposite. He said, pride goeth before a fall and a hearty somebody that think there's somebody a hearty heart before destruction that's God but to be something in this life have your name called and people know you likes all on the internet and man folks doing whatever they can you got to pledge to the gods and goddesses that's why Kanye can't make no you can't make no public decision to, to serve God and not walk away from what you into? All that, you a billionaire? It's ridiculous. First Corinthians 10 and 20, but I say, I wish he had called me, because I sure would have told him. Or you really want to serve the Lord? You really want to serve the Lord? Walk away from it. Oh, but God want to change partners with me. See, I have the devil as my partner now. I'm just changing partners over here. What about all the money the devil gave you? What about the fame the devil gave you? What about all the stuff that the devil has given you? Where does that go? Nobody would know you if it wasn't for the devil. We know you because of Satan. First Corinthians 10 and 20, but I say that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with what? Devils. devils. Travis Scott, the baby, Marilyn Manson, that's fellowship with devils. Do you know some weak, crazy Christian commented under it, but Jesus hung out with Marilyn Manson, okay, okay, Marilyn Manson. So if Jesus was here, he'd be hanging out with Marilyn Manson. 
now. The secret societies are now pushing the vax. Y'all know that's who's pushing it, right? <laughs> that's why all the Fortune 500, their trademark companies, alliances, and counterparts, they're all pushing the New World Order agenda without hesitation. What's the New World Order agenda? Population control. The New World Order, I told y'all way back in 2012, the population control agenda on the st Stonehenge in Atlanta and Jacques Cousteau and Bill Gates and all them. I, t I called them names many years ago. Nine years ago, maybe, when I shot that video. Yeah, some folks thought I just went on a health kick. Oh, see, you just went on a health kick. Oh, no, bro, I knew what was coming. I knew I needed to be healthy in the last days. Look, look, somebody, that's okay. You don't have to clap. Hold on to your sugar. Yeah, but all the trademark companies, alliances, counterparts, they're pushing the New World Order agenda of population control without hesitation. They're just requiring it. They know that the contents of this vax are not even listed on the packaging. They know it's experimental. John 15 and 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world what? Hates you. So if the world loves you, something's wrong. Yeah. I mean, if you broke the internet this morning by releasing your album, something is wrong. There was a real gospel message in it. It wouldn't be popular. You got the whole world to love you. Jesus couldn't do that. Got the world to give you billions, man. Can I keep preaching? Yeah. I feel like I'm preaching. Somebody in here is still thinking about the sugar. Now, what am I going to do? Thursday, I was supposed to go and have a cake day. That's when everything is on sale. Thursdays. That's the day. If I had known this last week, I would have had a Thursday that I could have went to the thing. Got to the desk. But he waited till Sunday. Thursday falls on the second. <laughs> but if you are of the world, the world will love you. Oh, man, this is good to me. Y'all, I'm not telling you. Well, y'all know. I'm not telling you anything I didn't have to practice myself. I had all the offers from the world to do it the world's way, to do it all. And my wife was there with me the entire time. And she'll tell you, there were times when I had to cry because it, I was so tempted by the money and the, whatever it was going to be. I had to cry because I was broke. I had to choose brokenness. Like having nothing. I had to choose that over riches and fame. You know, then you start thinking, well, but if I do it, then the ministry would be enhanced and I'd be able. But I didn't have no vision for ministry when it happened because with the vision comes provision. So God didn't give me the vision. God wanted me to believe that this was it for me. I turned this down. I'm just going to be broke till he come. That's what I thought. And I would come to my wife and tell her, I'd say, you happy? She's like, yeah, I'm happy. I was like, well, this is the way it's going to be. It's just going to be like this till Jesus come. Whatever I'm driving out there, that's what I drive till it break. Walk until I can find something else. That's how I had to be. Wasn't turning down something because, oh, behind this. No, no, no. That's not real. I know what was behind it. I just knew it wasn't right. Yeah. Amen. And I knew I couldn't represent folks that worship the devil or, or folks that promoted sin and debauchery. I can't. I can't be a part of that just for my own financial benefit. So I had these tests. I don't have no more because the devil know now. And bro, I got, I got stuff without you. Amen. Amen. And I don't need you. And 
if I don't have nothing, I have Jesus. And that's all I need to get through these end times. Look at somebody and say, he's all I need. Look at him and say, that's not just a song. But he's really all I need. Even the churches that are under the rule of Freemasons or Greeks and people are forcing the agenda of the New World Order onto their congregants. They're forcing their members to get the vax. If you want to come to church, to come together to worship the Lord, that's a requirement for the church? It's not a requirement for the church. Because that ain't no real church. That's a requirement of the Freemasons and the Greek pledge pastors that are forcing the agenda of the New World Order onto their congregants. Ephesians 5 and 12, for it is a shame to even, even to speak of those things which are done of them, what? When the crowd leaves, they all go to the back. Yeah, I've been there. I've been put out of rooms. Wife will tell you. Certain folk walk in. I mean, one time I was sitting there talking to a pastor, me and my wife, we just talking to him, blah, blah, blah. Certain person showed up. Everybody exit. Get out the room. Door closes. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, they doing something in that nasty. A ritual. When the world lifts you up and gives you a platform, you must conform to their agenda. That makes sense, right? The world makes you famous. You got to be one of them. The world ain't going to make you famous if they're afraid you're going to bust them. So they get something on you, they make you do something, get something on you, and then hold it and tell you if you say anything, we're going to release this. I was dealing with a very, 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 very famous singer. White dude. Famous! And he wanted to be saved. But he was scared because they had something on him. And it was so bad, I can't even mention it in here. So he went back to the world. You know, my advice, let it, you did it, put it out. Let God forgive you. But they so concerned about what people think. You're going to let people be the death of you? Can I keep preaching in here? The world lifts you up and gives you a platform. You must conform to their agenda. This is why so many churches and ministries are pushing people. Pushing. How you pushing people? You want to come? You're going to force people. And some of these churches worried about the wrong shot. They need to be worried about the HIV shot. Can I say that? You worried about the, you worried about the wrong virus. And I'm leaving that in the video. <laughs> you worried about the wrong virus. That music start, all that bucking and... <laughs> Can I keep preaching in here? Jude 12 describes these folks. Oh, so explicitly. These are spots in your feast of charity. Your feast of love, gathering the love of the brethren, us gathering together because we love each other. Brother, I ain't worried about you being sick or having something I might get. Brother, I love you. I believe the Bible said love covers a multitude of sins. I believe my love is greater than whatever's in you, brother. I shake your hand. I pray for you. I will be here because I love you. The love of the Lord? You don't believe God's love is more powerful than what they're talking about? You ought to believe it. Look around you. We're good in here because of the love of God. But Jude said these are spots in your gathering. Spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves 
without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. I like the clouds they are. It's like the threat of something. But there's really nothing there. I ain't scared of what you're talking about. Carried about of winds. Many doctrines and just foolishness. Trees whose fruit withereth. Your fruit wither and then you're without fruit. That means you're twice dead. Twice dead. Just like Margaret Sanger. Remember her? Pushed the Planned Parenthood scheme through the black pastors. Remember that? Talked about it in one of Oh, that was mother of all gods. It's part seven of the truth behind it. Part. Talked about Margaret Sanger. Pushing the Planned Parenthood scheme through the black pastors. Same thing. The, N the NWO, they were sterilizing black people because they felt like blacks were unwanted. So we got to kill them off. Sterilize them. So they were having them go to Planned Parenthood for abortions and then also sterilizations. All the st I don't even want to get into all the sterilization uh, experiments that they ran on black folks. Y'all know Tuskegee and different ones, but yeah. Huh. Same method. But just like Margaret Sanger pushed the Planned Parenthood scheme through the black pastors, the NWO is using the same methods to push their agenda on the masses through certain church leaders. 2 Peter 2 and 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly what? Perish, Perish where? In their own corruption summary did this message bless you today <laughs> Jesus taught us that it's hard for people with worldly prominence and earthly riches to enter into the kingdom he was speaking of those that seek after those things God don't have a problem with you having worldly prominence and earthly riches he just said it's going to be hard if those are the things you seek after. Remember when Abraham, when the king of Sodom approached Abraham and said, hey, you know, I want to give you all these spoils or whatever. He's like, nah, I can't take your money. Your money's dirty. He said, you can't make me rich. God has to make me rich. People that desire to be something in this life to prove they are something in the eyes of their neighbors cannot follow Christ. I'm going to say that again. These are the folks that's going to go to hell. Amen. People that desire to be something in this life to prove they are something in the eyes of their neighbors. They cannot follow Christ. Because Jesus taught that we should love our neighbors, what? As ourselves. And to esteem them just as what? Highly. People that seek, after, people that seek fame are seeking to be above others and rule over others. Like the gods of old. That desire is in you to be famous. That's an old one in you. You have an old, ancient, pre-flood spirit. Bible calls it a man of renown. You want to be renowned. Known. Yeah. In order to do this, you must summon an old one through various methods of conjuring. Pledging in the secret societies and Greek letter organizations. You didn't know that's why you became a Greek? Yes, you did. That's why you pledged. You knew that. You sit in here trying to act like you didn't know, but you know it. You knew if you connected with the brothers or the sisters, they were going to elevate you. That's all they talk about is elevation. All they talk about is what they have and what they've accomplished. They could care less about their husbands, their wives, their children, their family. They don't care about none of that. They care about what they drive, where they live, what they have. They'll spend all day, every day on the grind to get something. Can't even enjoy it because they're grinding all the time. But the, it's the grind. That's why they signed up for that. Took the pledge to the false god. Took the oath. Took the creed. Wear the colors. The skewy and all the stuff they do. The pink and green and red and blue. 
All of that is about prominence. Having something. Being somebody. Correct me when I'm wrong. Did you get in there to be a better wife? Did you get in there to be a good husband? Did you get in there so you can love the Lord more? No. You got in there so you could be somebody. How many times I got to say it, Landon? Before they hear me. People that seek fame are seeking to be above others and rule over others like the gods of old. And in order to do this, you must summon an old one. Pledging in the secret societies, Greek-led organizations, will get you connected to the underground religion. Y'all know what the underground religion is? Satanism. The Bible said he's the god of this world. So the worldly religion is Satanism. You worship Satan to progress in this life. You worship God to progress in the kingdom. I preach it! If it, man, boy, I know this is good. <laughs> so pledging in the secret societies and Greek led organizations will get you connected to the underground religion of accomplishments. <laughs> Do you know there's a religion of accomplishments? We all just sit around and talk. Like, you know, some folks have nervous breakdowns when it's time for the high school reunion. For the college reunion. You just, oh, you got to take pills. Oh, why? Because they're going to see that I don't have this. And I, they don't have. Some of y'all can't even go around certain anies. Because they're going to talk about what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that look. That's that old my husband hate me look. Because I'm always looking like this. Would you like it? <laughs> Ugly self. I try to judge somebody. <laughs> look at you. You a mess. Hot mess. But the underground religion of accomplishments and status. So the Greek-led organizations and secret societies, they will get you connected to the underground religion of accomplishments and status in exchange for your allegiance to false gods. So you got to pledge to the false gods. This is the devil's way of taking ownership of your life. If he allows you to be prominent through his old ones, then you owe him your devotion in exchange. Man, I'm preaching in here. This is why so many businesses, entertainers, and even church leaders are promoting the New World Order population control agenda. They know exactly what they are doing, but cannot refuse because they gain their fame and their wealth by being a part of the underground secret religion. They knew in exchange for the pledge or vows that they would one day have to support unsavory plots. But for the sake of their own fame and notoriety, they chose themselves over what is right. Satan's end time army consists of those who are willing to preserve their worldly achievements and accolades at any cost. When you are willing to sacrifice the well-being of others for the sake of progress and reaching your goals, you have denied the faith of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Somebody call Kanye and tell him that. When you're willing to sacrifice the well-being of others. Take your, just give Marilyn Manson to your whole audience. For the sake of progress and reaching your goals, you denied the faith of Jesus Christ. To truly love him with your life, you must deny the world's way for his. If you have pledged to a false God, denounce it. Amen. That's all we're talking about. Denounce it. If you have received anything from Satan in exchange for your allegiance, give it up. Give it back. Turn your back on the world and love God with your life.
Mark 10 and 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This stuck out to me. I've read this passage so many times. Something stuck out to me. What you running for? You don't have to run to catch Jesus. Jesus ain't running for nobody. He's making a show. He started this whole thing off wrong. Running, kneeling, oh good master. What can I do to get eternal life? He's making a show. He knows everybody's watching. You know how I know he's making a show? Because of what Jesus said. Jesus said, why are you calling me good? Like, dude, like, what's up? I mean, Jesus didn't say, dude, what's up? But you know what I mean. Like, why are you calling me good? There's none good but one. That is God. In other words, man, you disrespecting me. You're disrespecting all of this for a show. You want people to see you as somebody talking to me. And the way I know that is because Jesus says, you know the commandments. Don't commit adultery, don't kill, don't steal, don't bear false witness, defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. So Jesus immediately knew, impossible. Now you're a liar. Because if what you're saying is true, then there's no need for me. Jesus, I wouldn't even be standing here if what you just said was the truth. One of us is not the truth. Can I keep going? But the loving Savior, my Savior. Oh, I'm glad he loves me like this because I've said some stupid stuff too. Amen. I've said some stupid stuff. I put on a show to cover it. See, look, y'all gonna leave me out here. You know you've done it too. Cried when you wasn't sorry. <laughs> Come on. I should at least hear some men saying amen. You know you done done that. <laughs> yeah. But Jesus just loving him. Knowing. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So the Bible says, Mark 10 and 21, then Jesus beholding him, loved him. Loved him. He clowning, making a show. But Jesus knows in the back of his mind that Jesus knew in the back of his own mind that I'm here for this. This is why I'm here. So as wild and crazy as he's wilding out right now, I love him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing you lack, one thing you lack. Go thy way and sell whatever you have and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy cross, take up the cross and follow me. His real intentions came out now. He wasn't really there for that. He wasn't really there for what he said in the beginning. That's why he had to make a show. Because it was all a show. Because Jesus challenged him. Some of y'all said, well, but that's, that's a, well, he, Jesus required that of all the disciples. Walk away from everything if you're going to be with me. He's requiring that for all of us. You're going to choose worldly prominence? What people think of you? Your reputation and all of that over Christ? So the Bible said he was sad at that saying. Ooh. And he went away. Grieved. You went away from the Savior? That's why you were grieved. You went away from the Savior. For he had what? Great possessions. Everyone stand to your feet. We all human in here. Right? Any non-humans? We're all humans in here. So, we're tempted with the world. We're tempted with possessions. We're tempted to look better in front of others. Sometimes we just want others to see how well we're doing. Because they're the ones that said 
we, do, we wouldn't do well. So all of these things, sometimes we have complexes about what we have and complexes about what we don't have. We have complexes about our children, how bad they are. Now we got to keep covering up for them all the time. Or, or, I mean, just whatever. Or how our kids, we want our kids to be smarter than everyone else. Whatever it is. The aunt, aunties come around and bring the cauldron pot and they get the stir in and you just, you got to take up for your husband. Well, you know, he don't make as much as your husband, but he does pretty good. <laughs> just all oh, just stupid. Ooh. Stupid. It's not worth it. It's the world. So it doesn't matter. So we're all tempted by these things, but the one thing we can never be tempted, we, will, we cannot allow ourselves to be tempted by, is to be tempted to take something from the devil. Give credit for our lives to the enemy. Your life means more than that. So in this final hour, y'all, we got to draw the line. We got to make sure that we are loving him with our entire lives. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. We prayed this same prayer over and over, and we're going to keep praying it. Just like this man in the Bible who was out to prove his own value to others. Many of us are doing that. God wants to take that off of you today so that you can live your life the way God wants. Remove the stigma, remove the opinions of others so you can be who he created you to be. I want to pray with you and believe God for that with you. If that's you, I want you to just come up. Come on, whoever you are, just pull it away. I need that removed and taken away. I don't want to live my life Believing I have to prove my value, prove my worth, show out and show folks who I am and what I have and live based on the opinions of others. And let people's opinions tear me down. Even when I'm feeling good about things, their opinions just tear me down. Shame of who I am in front of others and rest of the family and I don't have what my aunties have I don't have what my cousins have and I don't have what they said I ought to have God wants to remove that from you hallelujah it's a simple gospel that's preached at ABC a real simple gospel it's just so simple it's holiness of hell we either gonna do this Jesus' way or we just what are we in here for? I choose his way. That, in, that, that encompasses my will, my desire. That encompasses all. I mean, that takes away all of that. All of that it takes away my will, my desire, what I think, what I want, what others want for me. I got to do it God's way. I promise you his way is the best way. Everyone bow your heads. Anyone else? Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for a message like this in a time like this. A message like this in 2021 in a time, Father God, where our world is so corrupt. So many, God, that are naming your name, that are saying they are of you, are doing things in secret, behind closed doors, to the devil. They're really devils in disguise. They're fooling so many. They are, Father God, just waiting to try to stop your truth, stop the true believers, close the churches pastors and leaders of their own churches are attempting to end the churches they don't want the gathering of the saints they don't want the power exhibited the power in numbers they don't want us coming together God 
but we believe that as long as we're here, your will can be done in the earth. We believe, Father God, that we can be beacons of light. We can be light and soft in 2021. God, we believe that we can walk with your light into the darkest of places in this hour. We believe that as long as we're here, God, your will can be done. As long as we're here, God, your will for us can be done. So we pray right now, Father God, that you will use us in this hour. But before you do that, God, remove the world from us. Take away the desire to be loved by the world the desire to be comforted, validated, affirmed by the world. Take those desires away, God. Every ounce of it. That desire to prove ourselves. That desire to be seen, to be known. That desire for someone to like us on the internet and comment and view counts and like counts. All of those things, God. Take these things away from us. Because we can't serve you and the world. We can't love you and love the world. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, is not of you, but it's of the world. So in order for us to love you, we must hate the world and let go of it. So help us, God. Come on, lift your hands up. Help us to let go of the world. Every bit of it, God. However it got in there whether it was someone's comments, whether it was someone's opinion, whether it was our upbringing, whether it was dysfunction, whether it was trauma, whether it was something we read, whether it was whatever the quest of knowledge was, God, I pray right now that you remove that from each and every believer in here whose hands are lifted to you. Remove it from their hearts, God. That desire to be something, that desire to be seen, that desire to be known, that desire to achieve something in the earth remove it Lord so that we can function the way you want us to function so we can be human beings and not human doings Father God so that we can be pleasing unto you in our creation roles walking in the role that you created us for so that, that will be our first affection and we'll desire to please you first in the name of Jesus with our hands lifted God we just pray right now even for the attack against the body of Christ Lord where they're trying to close churches or they're demanding that people take this vax to get into churches and just all of the things that are going on God we pray right now we pray against that agenda right now Father God we speak against the devil's agenda to close your churches to keep us from fellowship to keep us from uniting to keep the power from flowing in our midst father god the power of healing deliverance the power of salvation we speak against the evil agenda of the elite god we speak against the evil agenda of musicians and entertainers and actors and actresses and politicians and sports uh, athletes and just whoever computer guys whoever's behind this agenda we speak against it we speak against it and we just pray God I pray right now for all the youth pastors and youth leaders that were seduced into this Kanye West thing God we pray for them we pray Father God that their leadership will not be in question by the young people and the young people that were exposed to it will not give up on the church because of it God we pray for grace we pray for mercy and most importantly we pray for discernment in this hour so that we can see what the enemy is doing we can see his plan his plot his scheme and we'll be forever grateful to you Lord and we'll give your name the praise the glory and the honor that you deserve in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Come on, hug somebody and tell them, I'm going to love him with my life. Come on, I'm going to love him with my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.